This is not working for me. This is all a work in progress, guys. This is not something that I'm going to cut and splice and be like, um, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to be me. Good, bad, or otherwise is what you get. I will, however, adjust some things because this angle is not working for me. So give me a second. And I'm back. Hello, my loves, um, and happy Monday. Welcome to today's um, vlog edition. Uh, I'm going to try to do these um, every Monday. That's the plan, anyway, moving forward. Uh, or it, if I feel like there's something I want to talk about or address or share with you guys, it might not always be Monday. It could be random. But it's always going to be real, and it's always going to be in whatever moment I'm in and if it moves through something looking a little more professional than sweet and if not either way this, this is me so um, I had mentioned in my previous vlog which was pretty lengthy and I'm gonna say sorry not sorry um, I'm very verbose so if you are in a hurry or I'm you don't find value in what I'm giving or sharing with you then okay <laughs> there's gonna be somebody out there who that does and those are the people that I am talking to so and it, something struck me this morning um, I posted inspirational quote on my um, Instagram feed 99% of the days that I am awake which is I'm always awake but um, Sometimes I'll skip one, not intentional, but if I'm I'm having a rough day or or something pulls me away or I get sidetracked, then you might not see one in the morning. You might see one like at 11 o'clock at night when I'm winding down my day, but I try my best to to post them because I, I know that people have found value in those, um, as they have told me. So, but in, in looking for today's quote, I came across one that is pretty near and dear to my heart. And last week when I was talking in my vlog, I, I, I spoke, I turned this down a little bit. Give me a second. I mean, I love my ambient music. You know, I'm always going to have music. That's my disclaimer. I'm either going to be moving or singing or dancing or something. So, and that's just me. Good, bad, or otherwise. That's something I say a lot too, but I, I caught myself last week as I was rewatching it going, oh, ah, well, uh, you know, I am my own worst critic as most of us are. I am, I'm going to be harder on myself than anybody will ever be on me ever. And I found myself watching and listening and going, why did you say that? Like, well, you should be kinder to yourself, girl. You have spent many, many years telling, having people not say kind of things to you. You should be kinder to yourself. So um, that's always a work in progress. You know, I've spoken before plenty of times on the journey that I've gone through in the last 10 years of really that self-love and really learning about myself and um, coming off of some really tough stuff um, about 10 years ago. And so, um, but it's a work in progress. It's not, oh, it's not going to be perfect. And I don't want ever want to present myself as someone who is not real or not sincere that that's the worst thing that I could possibly do when I'm talking to you guys or sharing things with you is coming across as somebody who is is trying to blow smoke or present themselves in a way that is not real authentic sincere and whole that is me and this quote uh, hits pretty pretty hard to me, or not hard, um, close to home to me, because when I was looking at last week's vlog and thinking, gosh, be kinder to yourself, I, I was doubting. And then it went even further, because then I started researching the stuff that is really in this next chapter of my life, really where I'm going, and has been, I've been working on it, like it's been slowly working its way to the forefront, and I said that in last week's vlog, um, but it's true, but things are really starting to chug along now um, in kind of a weird way which I believe that whenever you follow your truth and you'll hear more you'll hear me talk more about that um, as time moves on but I really feel I really believe when you have figured it out um, what it is that you were truly meant to do 
and when it finally clicks that uh, that overwhelming sense of peace means you're moving in the right direction when I started to move to really like oh I really want to do this like this is truly where I'm supposed to be and truly what I'm supposed to be doing um, and part of that is talking to you guys that's that's part of where my journey's going but also into talking to live audiences so um, that's kind of where I'm, I'm not kind of, that is where I'm moving towards. That's, that's what I'm going to do. And you'll see that manifest itself in different ways. Um, but I started researching on it. Okay, what do I need to do? How do I get there? What is it that, and I started looking at all these other speakers. Um, cause the goal for me is, um, to talk to young adults who are going through, um, difficult times and, um, speaking to them from experience, from what I went through and from what my kids are, had gone through and talking to that age group. And I'm not just talking at a collegiate level. I'm talking 16 and up because a lot of kids are, are homeschooled. There aren't always kids that are out, you know, they're, they're homeschooled or they're, um, you know, they're, they're still trying to navigate those waters. I really think that it starts at that age and moves through into, you know, 22, 23 when you're starting to, to, to figure things out. But I know for me, in my personal experience, it really hit and I really had to grow up fast when I was 16. And there's a link in my bio um, to the vlog that talks about those th major ins instances or incident, what, however you want to say it, that really changed who I was and really caused me to grow up fast, lost the rest of my childhood at the age of 16. So, um, I'll, I'm posting that link in there. It had been private for a long time, but I will make it public so that you guys can see it and, and listen to it. Um, and hopefully you'll find value in, in my sharing my story. Somebody out there will, and I'm going to tell you this, this quote that, um, when I, <laughs> throttling back also tangential like someone else I know um, I'll veer off but I'll circle back around at least I try to um, and you'll hear me say that a lot I always try to, br to bring it back around so as I was saying I, I researched what it is that I want to do how do I get there what is it that what are the next steps for me um, how does one start to become a motivational speaker how do how do we do that where do I need to go and then I started looking up um, organizations that help you know young adults and I started looking up the speakers that they use and I started comparing myself to them and then I really started doubting that what I had to say or how I speak or anything was even worth it. I started to go, okay, well, maybe I'm not qualified to do this. Maybe I'm not, nobody's going to be sitting in the audience or maybe I won't get in front of an audience. Maybe, maybe that won't happen. Like I, I read these stories and I'm like, well, I didn't have that happen to me. I'm not a soldier. I didn't, you know, I don't have PTSD. I don't have bipolar disorder. I don't have you know, um, severe mental illness. I don't, I, I was not, um, a victim of sexual assault. Um, I, and I, I just kept thinking of all these different traumas that people had gone through that they are now speaking about and sharing their stories. And I thought, well, I can't compare to that. And then I stopped and as I normally do internalize things and really was just like, wait a minute. Wait a minute, girl. Let's just think about this here. We should take a breath, drink your coffee, go sit out on, on the veranda, which is really just my balcony, but it's so fancy when you say veranda. Um, and so I did that and I just kind of meditated for a while and just was just me and my dog and the sound of the water across the pond, which I've spoken about before. I love listening to the sound of water, but so I was looking for my inspirational quote, told you I was gonna, I was gonna bring it back around. Um, and I came across this one that really resonates with me and, and, and I keep it with me. And I was like, that's the one that, that's the one today. And today, um, 
I posted it on Twitter. I don't think I posted it on Instagram, but possibly tomorrow that will be that will be the quote. But the story goes as this. It's called the Starfish Story, and and some of you might know this story. And it, there's different variations of this story, but this is the one that resonates with me because it talks about a young girl. There's one that has a young a young man and you know an old woman. So far, that so on and so forth. I gotta make sure I'm looking at. We we know this people. Not great with the camera. Just strap in, guys. Um, also, the curls are gone. So, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I just feel better. I feel more myself now. I'm back to the original pixie. Anyway, a, a little vanity thing there, but I'm sure that people like are tuning into the video. <gasps> what about her hair? That's right, pixie's back. So, and I'm happier. Um, the starfish story, back to that. A young girl was walking along a beach upon which thousands of starfish had been washed up during a terrible storm. When she came to each starfish, she would pick it up and throw it back into the ocean. People watched her with amusement. Uh, she had been doing this for some time when a man approached her and said, little girl, why are you doing this? Look! At this beach you can't save all these starfish you can't begin to make a difference the girl seemed crushed suddenly deflated but after a few moments she bent down picked up another starfish and hurled it as far as she could into the ocean then she looked up at the man smiled and replied well I made a difference to that one. And that, to me, is important. Last week in my vlog, I, I was berating myself and telling myself, I'm nobody, I'm insignificant. You know what? That's a little crap, Anne-Marie. I matter. The fact that I am here means that I matter. Now, whether or not you find, you out there find value in anything that I'm saying is a whole different story. But if there's one person one person that I help by anything that I share or just by being here to listen, um, then it then I'm moving in the right direction. Then I'm doing what I am meant to do. And I truly believe that that's what I am meant to do. It has changed and evolved over the years. Um, you know, for the longest time, I believed that dance was the only thing that I was meant to do. Teaching dance was what I was meant to do. And then I came to realize that at some point the body is going to fail, right? What kind of legacy do I want to leave behind? Not that I have a legacy, but what is it that I want to be remembered for? Is it because I taught somebody how to dance? Yes, possibly, but more than that, teaching life is important to me and, and really listening to life and other people and how they are moving through their days and what is it that they're facing and dealing with and how can I be a friend? How can I help you? That, that to me is more it's going to be more important than anything I've ever done. And I'm going to get emotional about it because I truly believe that's why I'm here. <laughs> so that's the next adventure that I'm embarking on. And it's starting to manifest. It's, I just don't know how it's going to, but I feel like it. I'm on the right path. I'm following that truth and answering that call. Um, so just stay, stay tuned for that. Um, Part of also going into talking about comparing myself and not thinking that I have anything worth noting or talking about, um, they always say that, well, actually, they, it's not they always say, um, the podcast that I listened to this morning with Jay Shetty um, was really, really, probably as, as timely as I could have could have even imagined um, listening to. 
So when I talk about um, things that I want to do and moving in that direction, in that arena of motivational speaking, if there's anybody out there that um, has done it or uh, can give a bit of advice, I will take it as I learned through this because I'm definitely starting um, from scratch and we all have to start somewhere. Everybody has a first day. So this is mine. <laughs> Everybody has a first day and, and you have to understand that. Don't be afraid to try something that you might be bad at. I don't think I'm going to be bad at it. I think that the tools that I have had over the years of performing um, and being on stage and even speaking or singing in front of people is going to help that. It's only going to help me accelerate um, fast. That's the that's what accelerate means is moving faster. Come on, Anne Marie. Duh. Uh, anyway, moving on. Um, I was talking about comparing traumas, and that um, the title of this vlog is um, "Trauma is not a competition," meaning. I believe if you have um, that passion and that drive to help others the way that I, I have that passion and that drive and, and that's where I'm going and that's what I want to do, um, I don't think it's a competition in what you are able to speak on, meaning I don't think that I have to have um, the same trauma as somebody else or say, well, okay, well, so you're a soldier that has PTSD. I've got blah, 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 blah. That's horrible. That would be a horrible way to think. Um, I, we all have, move through different things in our lives. We've all experienced trauma in one way or another. It could be the tiniest little thing. It could be multitude of things. It could be one tiny thing and a giant tiny thing or, or whatever. I will say this. And why I believe that I am I am meant to help. It's because I have had several different types of trauma happen to me. Um, and some of them actually in a similar vein. You know, losing my mother to a domestic abuse situation. Again, the link is in the bio if you want to hear this trilogy. Into moving into a physically abusive relationship. Into a mentally and emotionally abusive relationship. To then going through that... Um, darkness and really finding myself again um, that I lost starting at the age of 16 so from 16 till yeah um, uh, until now not even now 10 years ago those that those years of trauma um, led me to here I do have here's why it's important to me uh, my bestie came out um, which some of you know if you've watched some of our foolishness in my YouTube channel of when she was here. She's really going through a tough time and I told her to just come see me. Come see me because intrinsically I knew I knew how to help her because we have been friends for almost 30 years. She's diagnosed bipolar um, and I knew she was bipolar before she was diagnosed. Um, just because of her swings um, that I had witnessed. And so I know, I know her all too well and, and how she moves through things and, and what it is that she needs from me. But I think as an empath, um, I, I feel things without people having to tell me how they're feeling. I can, I can feel it, um, which sometimes is a great thing if they're feeling so much joy and I just want to be around it and soak it up like a sponge. Here's what I liken it to. Um, if anybody were to ever ask me, um, if you could have, you know, if you were a superhero, what powers would you have? I, I hear celebrities get this question asked in a lot of their panels. Like, if you were a superhero, what what superhero power would you have? First of all, if I was a superhero, I'd be Wonder Woman. That, as far as superheroes go, that that's from a young age. That's from a little girl, you know, five years old, six years old, watching Linda Carter on TV and um, Diana Prince, you know, twirling into her Wonder Woman. That I'm Wonder Woman. That's it. 
no ifs, ands, or buts. Now, if we're talking about actual, like, just, like, if you wanted to embody certain superhero powers, for me, now, I was never an X-Men girl growing up. That, I, that, that was not a comic that I really kind of got into. However, um, the superpowers that I, you know, some people are like, flight, I want to be flight, or I want to fly. Heights and I are not friends, so that's not an option for me. I, I, I would be the worst superhero who could fly because I'd be like, boy, no, boy, no, boy, no. God, no, what am I doing up here? It would be like, I wouldn't, I would be flying like this. I can't look down. Like that, I would be the worst superhero flying ever. Um, and some people would want invisibility. I would feel like you would have to be completely naked for some reason to be invisible, to turn into invisible. Like, I don't know why that's in my brain, but I feel like you shouldn't have any clothes on because you could, unless the clothing becomes invisible itself. Like, I don't understand how that would work. And then I would, I would be afraid that somebody would like splash water on me and I'd be completely nude and I'd be just like, no, <laughs> you don't get to see that. Um, so that's, that's out for me. For me, if I were to have a superhero power, my superhero power would be the power that Rogue has. Even though I'm not an X-Men girl, the ability to absorb other superhero powers. Um, now, granted, she has to touch them, which would be a little probably weird if I... But you get what I'm saying. Like, for me, as an empath, like, that that's my right now I feel that's how I liken that that's that's the closest that I can describe that is absorbing other people's energy sometimes that can be a really great thing for me um, and sometimes not so much sometimes that can take me days to, to to pull out of if I'm around it for too long the the negative side of that um, but because I can feel that I can understand as what an empath is I empathy empathetic empathic uh, all of it intrinsic so I can I can just sit with someone and not have to say anything that's the advice that I would always give somebody who is in a situation where I don't typically find myself uh, everybody goes through bouts of depression, right? Or seemingly, you know, I'm just feeling down today or, or sad or whatever. I, I have those days too, but they aren't days for me. I don't lay in bed and never want to get out of it. I, I've never had that to me. Um, I can understand how that would be um, based on the people that I love that, that go through those days and, and understanding that that that's part of them and that's okay and if you need to lay in bed for 18 20 hours because you're just too tired of fighting then that's what you do and I'm gonna be on the other side of that or I'll be there with you and we'll watch movies or you know I'll read to you or or just talk about anything other than what it is that you're feeling or let's go grab a bite to eat that's that's advice that I would give to those who are who are loved ones of people who are struggling with depression or anxiety um, um, or diagnosed severe mental illness um, that isn't severe enough for um, hospitalization or, or um, um, professional round the clock care, basically. Um, I don't know if that makes sense at all, but for me, the best advice I can give anybody is just to be there and to listen or not to listen. Just, you know, take them out of that, um, by doing things without saying okay we're gonna cheer you up and let's go put on a you know a happy face and no but hey let's go grab a bite to eat uh why don't we go to a movie or um you know let's go take a walk um let's go sit and listen to the water you want to go fishing or 
you know, whatever it is that they enjoy doing. Um, it might be a struggle for them to get out of the house or to move in that direction, but I think it's important that you um, help them in a way that is good for them. And that can mean different things to different people. Take, for instance, my bestie who we were just talking about. Um, if I have anything that I need to vent about or, you know, when I'm just like, oh, I just, yeah, most of the time I internalize things. And for me, being on my own, that means I'm truly on my own. And I, I work through things by myself and God. And that's it. I might have already come to a decision that I've been grappling with. And, but I, and I, then I might reach out to other people and say, hey, what do you think about this? When I've already decided. Um, that just helps me validate my decision. Um, it won't change it. <laughs> Even if they're like, uh, maybe not so much. I will do it anyway, probably just because I have thought everything through. I am an overthinker, so I have thought of every possible reason not to do something before I make the decision to do it. So it's not something that, you know, if I, if I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to try something new or, or get involved in something, um, I've already made that decision before I reach out to somebody and I've already done the work on it. So it's just more of a validation when I'm talk to my bestie, like, Hey, this is what I'm going to do. And she's either gonna be like, okay. <laughs> or, uh, I mean, like, oh, no, I, I'm going to do it. <laughs> like, either I'm going to fall and crash or I'm going to fly. And, you know, sometimes it's, you know, a couple of <laughs> before you take off. I don't even know what that sound was. That, that makes absolutely no, whatever. Anyway, um, I will always approach her with, how are you feeling today? How's your headspace? Can I talk to you about something? Or are you up to that today? I will always ask her where her headspace is or how she's feeling before I just jump in. And I think that's important. I think that's important um, for any of you who are, are close friends with somebody that you know that deals with um, depression and anxiety. Please make sure that they are mentally and emotionally able to handle whatever it is that you're going to talk to them about because oftentimes people who deal with um, anxiety and depression more often than not they are um, highly empathetic they understand other people's feelings much like I do I just am have always had a rebound factor that um, you know that's part of my superhero power too I mean, I've, I've absorbed the rebound like I'm a quick like no because because I've seen so much darkness I just know that there's light and I know that the quicker that I get out of that darkness the more light that I have but there's other reasons for it. I'm just built differently than some people and some people just can't rebound from certain things as quick. I can also compartmentalize things because the way my brain works, it's just, I, I just, I can. I can rationalize and think, you know, logically and practically and that's just how I'm, that's just how I'm built. Um, which is just weird <laughs> for some people. In any case, this rambling on that I'm doing is, and I'm going to wrap this up here. It's not going to be as long of a vlog as it was last week. Um, circling back around to if you are thinking about um, starting something much in the way that I'm getting ready to embark on this next chapter of my life, probably the most important chapter I could ever embark on um, in following my truth. Just know whatever it is, whether it be this or whether it be, you know, you're in the professional world or as in, you know, corporate side of, of business or um, the other thing that I do other than teach dance is I've been in retail management for over 30 years, um, I've been, you know, leading teams of people and 
um, running logistics on events and you know that's kind of my thing um, just bringing people together and helping them move in the same direction um, while paying attention to their individual jobs that like that's that's I've been known to create peace and chaos like and that's not me boast being boastful that's something that's been told to me like creating calm and chaos um, Amory, this you you create calm and chaos. So, I, I like to hang my hat on that, and um, I'm pretty proud of that actually, um, because if you can bring peace to anybody, that's that's a pretty cool super superhero power to have. I think. Anyway, um, don't compare yourself. If you're wanting to move forward with something that you've never tried before. Do your research, for sure, but don't compare yourself to what everybody else is doing because their journey is going to be different than yours. Period. It will not. It, it will not be the same, and nor should it be the same because how boring would that be if we were all the same? We're all different. We all have different things to bring to the table. There might be some similarities in the messages that we, you know, are trying to give. Um, other people or whatever platform we're using I may not be a celebrity and I may not have a platform that has you know millions of viewers but I'm a circle back to that one person if there's one person that finds value in anything that I'm saying whether it be in front of me in here oh yeah look at the right camera across the world whatever wherever they may be in the world if they're watching this and they find value then I'm doing the right thing I am on the right path and I will continue to move in that direction helping one starfish at a time enjoy your Labor Day guys um, I will talk to you soon peace out pip nuts love you bye <laughs>